Okay, so obviously if you've got areas like this where the background is showing through, then what we can do is just fill it with a colour. And normally what you do is you go to this colour picker here, the pipette, go to the, where you've got a section of the background colour that you want. So uh, let's take this one. Okay, so it's picked up the colour. So what I'm going to do now is just select the area I want to fill. So I'm just going to take a little square around that. And then I'm going to use the fill tool and hopefully that will fill in the detail there. Finally, we need to sort out the uh, the background around here just before we do the final crop. So I think what I'm going to try and do is get rid of some of this distracting detail because it's really not required for the picture. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make a try and make a selection around the side of the building here, and then I'm just going to try and fill it with a sky color. Um, so I'm just going to make a square around here. I think I'm on the background layer at the moment. And I just need to find where this pasted layer is. Over here, it's not that one, it's that one. That's nice, so I am probably going to click back on the background. Pick up that colour from this background. I'm going to see what a, f a just basic fill into that area does. Okay, that gives me a little bit of blue there, although this is a little bit of a harsh edge. Um, it's going to stand out a little bit, so... I think what we're going to do is kind of kind of dither that area a bit. So um, let's go and select that edge down there. That edge down there, down there, down there, down there, across. This is going to be cropped off anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to come back there. Okay, so with my selection made, all I need to do is do filter... Blur, and I can either use blur or Gaussian blur. I'm just going to use a normal blur and see what that does down here. So you can see that's blurred the edge a bit, so it's made it a little less harsh. If I um, zoom out, you might be able to see that a little bit better. So um, here we go. So we've got a little bit of sky, we've got a little bit of um, building. So this looks about right. Obviously, we could spend quite a while trying to enhance this. I think what we'll do is we'll make our final crop, which I'm going to take down there and down there. And um, let's try and make it fairly symmetrical. As you can see, we've got a lot of different layers down here that we've been working on. And if we start clicking them off, we start to see where we've uh, made all the changes. And if we come all the way back here, if you click them all off, we'll see uh, pretty much all we've done down here. There's been a, a lot of work around this corner where it was clipped out. Okay, I'm just going to re-display all these layers down here. Doesn't seem to be an easy way of re-displaying all layers, but uh, there we go, back in. The last thing you need to do probably before you uh, complete your file is you're going to save it out as an XCF file. So I can save this as XCF. Finally, when you're sure that you're not going to be uh, doing any more editing, you can get rid of all these extra layers and merge them all into the one layer just by doing image, flatten image. Okay, and that'll combine them all now into the one image that you can save off. Obviously, I would advise that you first save off the layered version as an XCF file, which is GIMP's uh, internal format. And then if you ever find that you've missed something out, then you can come back and uh, make some additional changes as you see fit.